Brian here. Here's a question that, like, it, this used to be like the most popular question when electric cars started getting more popular. Uh, and it's still a pretty popular question, but how long does it take to charge an electric car? There's a couple of variables you gotta think about. The first one is the car itself. So in other words, what size is the battery, as in how much power is it going to take to actually get it fully charged. And then the second is the rate of charge. So let's use this car here as an example. So this one here is a 58 kilowatt hour battery. So lots of like things like Nissan Leafs are 40 kilowatt hours. Ionic 5, 58 kilowatt hours. It can also be a 73 kilowatt hour or a 77 kilowatt hour. So, you know, the battery size is pretty easy to find anyway. So whatever car you have or are considering buying, the battery size is the first variable. So in other words, that car to be full of electricity, in other words, this one here, because it's 58 kilowatt hours, it basically needs 58 kilowatts to be completely full. And the whole thing with how long electric cars take to charge really anyway is, you know, a lot of people used to kind of say, how long does it take? And they're curious from the point of view from 0%, but it's very rarely 0%. Right, the first way to charge one of these cars is a three pin socket. That is the three pin socket. And then it plugs into this here. Why did I go into such a dark area of the workshop? I do not know. So that plugs in into the three pin. It's going to start charging, which it has. Now, there is one thing on these types of chargers, you can vary the speed on them. So at the moment, oops, this is, um, 10 amps so that's giving the max right but they are changeable to a point where you can have uh like say for example if i said let's go with six amps that means then that this car is going to charge at a rate of approximately you can see down here 1.2 kilowatts every hour so that means every hour 1.2 kilowatts will be gone into the battery and unfortunately that means it's going to take 37 hours so what you do is on one of these if you have one of these now i've done a video about this before so you're probably familiar but uh, if you're not you can up the ampage so you can go to eight okay hold this down or you can go to 10 so i can set it for 10 and that means now that this three pin should be starting to give me approximately two kilowatts every hour so now you can see the um how would you say the remaining time predicted is more about 21 hours because every hour there's two kilowatts going in so that is your kind of crux of your calculation a 58 kilowatt hour battery getting two kilowatts every hour 58 divided by two that means about 29 hours from zero percent but nobody ever gets to zero percent by the way that is if you're single phase so three pin socket single phase being what most residential houses are in ireland uh, after that then if you uh, again single phase if you want but um, most people will have a charge point in their house a lot of charge points are capable of up to seven kilowatts every hour so that means then we can see our charge rate is completely changed and that means now that uh these ones are capable of up to seven it's not always seven and like i was saying i'll tell you the while well charging is all a completely linear thing so uh this one here is now charging at 6.5 kilowatts every hour so that means now we'll see we're now down to about a six and a half hour charge time to complete the charge on this car again using the idea if we were working from zero which we never really are but a 58 kilowatt hour battery charging at 6.5 kilowatts every hour 58 divided by ooh, how am i thinking uh nine hours so that's basically 58 divided by 6.5 so it's about nine hours basically that's what happens in your house uh so if you go into like an industrial sort of setup like what we have here in the garage now you're into three phase three phase basically is going to allow uh higher amounts of electrical current to flow um, so that means a charger like one of these ones we have in the garage which operates on three phase this one actually allows flow of up to about 11 kilowatts um every hour so that means then as you can see in this one now we're down to well we're flowing at 10.5 kilowatts every hour uh, which means now we're down to about four hours to fully charge the remaining amount of the battery Again, using the idea if the battery was completely empty zero which they never are um you'd be looking at probably 58 kilowatt hours divided by um kind of 10 and a half 11 kilowatts every hour that's about kind of five and a half hours something like that another thing that we need to think about here is these are all ac so there's ac and dc power dc where you're charging directly onto the battery ac which is important here where it's going through an onboard uh, charger and there's a converter that basically moves it from ac power converts it into dc power and that puts it into the battery um but think about that right so when you're going from ac power coming out of the wall it gets converted into dc so the battery can use it there's a maximum amount of charge that's going to be available as in there's an onboard charger and it's got a limit but before i just click on to that point let's summarize so far so we know the size of the battery is important we know the size of the charger that's important we've talked about the fact that power comes from a wall in ac form and needs to be formatted or converted into dc power 
uh, and there within lies the next problem. So say something like this, Hyundai Kona, that car uh, sitting at a seven kilowatt hour charger, based on the information I've given you so far, that car will be charging away at around 6.5 kilowatts at the moment. In this case, you can see it's varying around kind of 6.5, 6.6, okay. The onboard charger that is, oops, sorry about the turbo camera. Clumsy. Uh, so the onboard charger then um, is involved in this process of converting from AC into DC. So I'm switching here from this Kona into this Santa Fe. This is probably going to be more a PHEV thing than electric cars. Most electric cars now really do, do allow seven kilowatts, but I'm sure there's ones that maybe all the ones that don't. But here's the thing. If you get into like a plug-in hybrid Tucson, it'll allow you that kind of level of flow. But this doesn't. This Santa Fe maxes out at about 3.3 to 3.4 uh, kilowatt hours. Not as big an issue on something like Santa Fe because to be fair, it's got a 13.8 kilowatt hour battery. So even if you're flowing at three odd, three, six, nine, twelve, four and a half ish hours anyway you know it's not the end of the world but on electric car that'll be a problem but it's just more to make you aware of the fact that like we're talking about the size of the battery is important the size of the charger is important but the onboard charger in the car is also important so there are all variables that you need to think about when you're trying to calculate how long it takes to charge an electric car so like what we said then the everything we talked about so far and everything you've seen me plug into they're all ac chargers that are basically running through onboard chargers in the cars which are allowing the conversion to put the power into the battery DC. If you go to the public network, uh, there is DC charges. They charge the battery directly. Again, a couple of things you need to consider on that is going to be similarly again, what is the capability of the charger and what's the capability of the car? So for example, something like this Hyundai Ioniq 5, one of its big things is that it can take 225 kilowatts per hour uh, on a charge, where something like maybe a Hyundai Kona is limited uh, on DC charging to about 50 kilowatts, which is still damn fast. So the cars will have uh, specific capabilities on what sort of DC charging they're able to take. But I suppose the crucial thing about DC is it's not restricted anymore by an onboard charger. You are charging the battery directly and that allows an increased level of flow. So just like the AC set up from earlier, the ability of the car is the big thing and then the actual ability of the charger is the second point as well. So in Ireland, there's loads of different chargers available. So you've got things like there's Easy Go, there's Circle K, there's Apple Green, there's Ionity, there's Tesla. There's loads of different ones that are available and again they will have different capabilities within themselves so the maximum i think uh, at the moment as the time of the video and i stand to be corrected on this i think it's up to like 300 kilowatts per hour or something like that but it'll vary around different ones if you do have an electric car then there's going to be apps out there that will be useful apps uh, for example you have the likes of open charge map or you have zap map or plug share they're all different uh, apps that will basically allow you to give you a guide as to where what type of chargers are in the location that you are. And this brings us on to our last point. So one thing we said was, if you had a car like the Ionic 5, which could do uh, 225 kilowatts, it was able to take that into the battery, and the battery was like a 58 kilowatt hour battery, technically the whole thing should be charged in 25 minutes. Doesn't work like that, unfortunately. So charging is not like a, turn on my charger, it charges at the exact same rate, and then it stops at the end. It just doesn't work like that. The way it works, and this will help explain why Hyundai say this car here, when they advertise it, it can charge from 10 to 80% in around 18 minutes using a 350 kilowatt hour charger. To give you a better idea of what I'm talking about, charging is just not that linear in this DC version. So basically, uh, I'll show you a chart that Ionity did some research on the Ionic 5, and this is what they found. So when you look at it, right, what happens is the very, very start, you'll see from zero up to 10% is charging at just under 100 uh, kilowatts. Very quickly, from about 10 up to about 25-ish percent, it moves up to kind of nearly 190 odd kilowatts. And then after that, from 30 up to 50, it moves up to like 220 kilowatts. And then after that, from about 50 up as far as 80, you have this range of about 100 to 175 kilowatts. And you can see after 80 percent, it really starts to slow down. Um, so I suppose when you look at the manufacturer, why would they advertise it from 10 to 80 being 18 minutes? Because that is kind of a really fast proportion. Uh, sorry, really fast portion even. But hopefully that gives you an idea. Charging is not linear. So that will restrict how quickly the car can take a charge. So to summarize, the things that we saw in terms of AC charger, we need to worry about the size of the battery, we need to worry about the uh, charger itself, its capabilities, and the onboard charger of the car. When it comes to the DC charge, we're worrying about the capabilities of the car and the capability of the charger. Hopefully you've learned something in the video. If you've watched all the way, I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Brian here from Fitzpatrick's.